Welcome to KCGM, owner of the iconic Kalgoorlie Super Pit in the heart of Western Australia's world-famous Eastern Goldfields. KCGM stands for Kalgoorlie Consolidated Gold Mines. As the name suggests, it was formed in the late 1980s by bringing together the many gold mines which had been developed on Kalgoorlie's lucrative Golden Mile in the century following the discovery of gold there by Paddy Hannon in 1893. For the first time in its long history, the Super Pit is now fully owned by West Australian companies. This was the result of Saracen Mineral Holdings buying a half share of the project in late 2019. Soon after, another WA gold miner, Northern Star Resources, acquired the other half. These two Perth-based companies quickly set about conducting a full review of the project, using their extensive knowledge and experience as leading WA gold miners to assess, examine and question every aspect of the operation. Uh, first and foremost, it's gold endowment. Um, this is one of the richest gold endowments globally, with over 60 million ounces produced here behind me from the Gold Mile um, since 1893 at a head grade of a bit over five grams per tonne. Also the significant reserve life we see here. So we've got 15 years of life on reserve and another 10 million ounces of resource sitting above that. You know, what a fantastic gold system. We've always said the best way to find gold is near a gold mine, and you don't get any better geological systems of world-class nature than the Kalgoorlie and KCGM Super Pit and Mount Charlotte Undergrounds. I'd also like to acknowledge our JV owners in Northern Star. Um, it's fantastic for the first time in this asset's history to have two like-minded, growth-orientated Western Australian companies owning this historic asset. Look, we've got a simple model in sort of Northern Star side that Saracen uh, have got the same philosophy as uh, if you don't drill, you don't find, if you don't find, you don't mine. And, and the beauty about grabbing hold of this asset now, we're doing all of that. We're drilling, we're finding, we're analysing. The more we dig, the more we find, um, the more we optimise, the more we review, um, the more, I guess, this operation looks positive. So very good resource and reserve update. That really has set an unbelievable foundation for this operation, its employees, the stakeholders, and very importantly, it's the city of Kalgoorlie and Boulder. With the change of ownership, we initiated a new strategic review of the whole operation. Part of that process was bringing a significant amount of drawal data that was not previously in our geological model. The outcome was significant. Uh, we increased our reserve and our resources. It was the first time we published a, a draw compliant reserve of 9.7 million ounces. Resources up to 19 million ounces. Now, if we look at that, it depends a 15 year mine life for us here at uh, KCGM. Through our owners, our JV partners, Saracen and Northern Star, which is really focus driven on getting the results and the outcomes in terms of productivity and engagement with our community. With a change in ownership as well, uh, we introduced a whole new site leadership team on site. Uh, Sukondis from Northern Star and Saracen giving us a wealth of knowledge and experience that we could cash in immediately. Uh, we already created a lot of chains on site, looking at from a mid-tier lens, improving our productivities and focus for the future. I've been working for so many years in so many different deposits and I've never seen uh, the sheer scale of the Golden Mile. Previously, uh, we had a non drop compliant resource of 12 million ounces. We've taken that to a fully drop compliant resource of 19 million ounces. That's an incredible increase of 7 million ounces. I had the pleasure this year of working on the resources and reserves for KCGM. Uh, we took a reserve of 6.3 million ounces which was non jork compliant, to a fully jork compliant reserve of 9.7 million ounces, an increase of 3.4 million ounces. KCGM's robust inventory also underpins significant increases in forecast production, which is now set to rise to between 440,000 and 480,000 ounces this financial year to over 500,000 ounces a year by FY24 and over 675,000 ounces by FY28. Right now, I'm standing in front of Brownhill Cutback. 
We started mining this cut back in April 2020. Uh, originally, it was planned to get mined in 22, but we have revised our strategy to get access to east wall remediation using brown hill cutback as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two access from both sides to enable us to mine brown hill and east wall remediation a bit faster. What it's gonna do is it's gonna also reduce our cost and make it more safer and uh, cheaper to mine. The Finiston South project is a layback on the southern end of the Finiston open pit. It's the most significant layback to occur in over 10 years. It's added 3.9 million ounces of reserve and it is expected to grow with our investment in exploration and conversion of resources to reserves. The approvals process for the Fimiston South project has been progressing extremely well. We've just received the environmental approvals for the first stage of Fimiston South. We're now working on getting our mining approvals for that area. The second stage of Fimiston South will have its approval submitted in the coming year and we'll start mining that area once the first stage of Femiston South is complete, probably around the year 2026. The staged mining process for Femiston South has allowed us to bring ounces forward in the plan so that we have improved the value of the project as well as spread the cost of the capital over several years. There's a renewed focus here in the open pit on productivity and efficiency, finding better ways in doing things. We've already seen a significant change. In the June quarter alone, a 49% increase in material movement. Also underway and in our budget for this year, our fleet renewal, a new PC8000 shovel, and four new dump trucks. Also underway, we have our recruitment campaign, which is hopefully going to help us get back to our historical norm of moving around 70 to 80 million tonne per annum. In the past you know, 12 months, and there's been a tremendous amount of work being done from the collective engineering and ecology teams um, to reinvest in the mine and re-energise the focus on the potential of the operation. And the reinvestment of the operation has led to a lot more interest in the growth and potential of the mine outside of the Charlotte ore body. And that in turn results in increasing the longevity of the mine and future proofing this operation and the ounce production from it. And the result has been fantastic with over doubling the previous 12 months reserve to now a new 510,000 ounces. So since I've been here, we've changed the roster for the crews. So everyone here now works a, a seven day on, seven day off, 12 hour day roster. Uh, so that involves splitting the two crews that were here at the time into four. Uh, we were also able to reduce the number of machinery underground. Uh, we've done that to be able to match the machines to the work areas and it's made the whole crew much more efficient. We've seen approximately 25% increase in productivity for the individual hours worked underground. So not just more hours by having more people, but people being able to do more with those hours uh, because there's the freedom to, to move around the mine without it being so congested. We've also moved to 24 hour firing. So we've limited the number of times we have to clear the mine for firing and the delays that we have when we re-enter the mine. That's allowed us to add about 45 minutes to an hour of productive time every 24 hours that previously we didn't have. I think the future of Mount Charlotte's very exciting. It's a, it's a very old mine, but it's definitely not near the end of its life now. There's a number of different peripheral ore bodies or offsets to the ore body that we're exploring and getting, getting ready to mine now. And there's also uh, the exciting opportunity of continuing to mine the main Charlotte ore body at depth, which uh, we're planning to drill out in the near future and get a good understanding of what's down there so we can, we can keep moving down uh, and keep this mine alive for a few years to come. The big girl you see behind me at the moment is doing around about 1,400 tonne an hour. We push it through around about 12.4 million tonne per annum. Uh, really pushing hard on recovery. Uh, reagents, throughput and availability. If we improve our recovery by 1%, that adds further viable mine sources to be available to be mined. An opportunity for growth and development, not only for the operation, but the people in it are just enormous. We really are, it's like, uh, you know, how big is this gonna get? Well, I think we're on the precipice of that. Uh, really igniting the potential for the place and, and the opportunity for growth and improvement.
after working with KCGM for many years, it never ceases to amaze me the amount of spectacular exploration results that we are receiving on a daily and weekly basis. If you look at the Fimiston and Mount Charlotte uh, ore bodies, over the historically we've mined 60 million ounces in the area, and with the addition of 19 million ounces in resources, means that we're sitting on a 79 million ounce deposit, which is pretty world class by any means. KCGM tenements span about uh, 34 kilometres, so spanning from up at the Guji smelter up in the distance. From the Guji smelter we have got um, a series of workings from north to south. So we're starting off with Hannan's North Tourist Mine uh, on to uh, Mount Percy, which is mined in uh, 1994 at about a gold price of about $380. And we know that uh, hasn't been revised and has got lots of opportunity and potential there. And then on to Mount Charlotte itself, where we know that the ore body is open at depth and long strike. The drilling has not closed off the ore body at depth yet, and we're continuing to follow up new targets that we're generating even within the char ore body itself. And then to the east of uh, Charlotte, we've had some success over the last couple of years. There's a series of workings that run the whole way from Mount Charlotte to Fimiston. Um, lots of workings, shafts. We've tested many of these targets in the last couple of years and had significant success. There are continuously more uh, shafts and um, underground workings to be tested all along strike and the uh, opportunity is quite exciting in that area. Then with Fimiston itself, it's still not closed at depth. We've been drilling underneath over the years, testing the targets at depth, and we're still finding more gold beneath the historical workings. So the historical workings themselves, when you look over the pit, are actually the same depth again as from when you're at the lookout. So it just gives the scale and size of this pretty amazing ore body. Then the tenements continue down, all the way down to Mount Hunt and on to BHP's nickel smelter. So in the area, we know that we've got the same stratigraphy as what we get here at KCGM. So within Charlotte and Fimiston, uh, with the gold mall dollar being their primary host, we know that it continues probably another uh, five or six kilometers to the north and south. And there's some um, pretty interesting targets um, on the horizon there that have not been tested. So um, lots of targets, lots of potential, an exciting future ahead. The amount of ounces that we can find and convert is limited simply by the amount of holes that we can drill. If you have a look at the long section of Fimiston, you could be fooled to believe that there's a southerly plunge. However, this plunge, or apparent plunge, is only uh, defined by the amount of drilling that we have. If we can drill more into the northern section, I'm quite sure that we'll be able to convert ounces within there. One of the other areas that we're particularly excited about is the saddle area. This is between the eastern and western loads and the southern section of the pit. If we can convert ounces within this, we'll be able to improve the mine economics of the FIM South area and keep the mine life going for longer. I'm part of the Keta Gym Environment Team. Our responsibilities including, include seeking approval for future expansion of our mine site and also managing key environmental aspects of our activities. That includes dust, noise, vibration and blasting, and rehabilitation. So behind me, you can see uh, some of our slightly older rehabilitation done in 2013. At KCGM, uh, we had a problem with erosion of our topsoil. Our topsoil is um, quite saline and quite difficult to keep on slopes, so we've adjusted designs to favour erosion resistance solutions. So we've incorporated a lot of rock into our designs. KCGM has a strong relationship with the city of Kalgoorlie Boulder, one that has strengthened and evolved over many years. The proximity of our mine uh, in relation to the town, coupled with 30 years of operation in the goldfields, all of our people living locally, and many of our suppliers and contractors, means that whilst we are inherently linked, it's not something that we can take for granted. We engage broadly with the community. We've invested over many years in significant social infrastructure. We've established long-term community partnerships. And just last year alone, we invested in over 35 individual community organisational initiatives that add to the vibrancy of this town. We have also just recently implemented a sophisticated engagement tool called Local Voices that enables us to understand in real time community sentiment towards our operation and track trust over time. This enables us to be agile in our response to emerging community issues or needs, as well as capitalising on the many opportunities that arise in a town such as Kalgoorlie Boulder. 
For over 100 years, gold has been dug from what is now the KCG of operation, and it's been the mainstay of mining in Kalgoorlie Boulder. It's in fact the barometer, the measure by which we judge success in the industry. Um, it's a place where 11 or 1200 of our people work. They live here, they're connected here, and the things that they do in life, be it sport or shopping or, or arts and culture, are intrinsically linked to the operations uh, of the gold sector particularly, and KCGM in particular. What's good for KCGM and the super pit is good for our city and what's good for Cavalry Boulder is good for the super pit. So it's in our mutual interest to get along. And as I say, having Australian ownership back in Australian hands, I believe is good for our community and good for the mine. Uh, I think Australians have this can-do attitude and we've seen that uh, with Ralph Finlayson and, and, and Bill Beeman, that they can get things done. They don't talk about it so much. They just go and do it and let their actions speak rather than their words. And uh, as a community, uh, I hope that our relationship continues to grow uh, and continues to be a close one like it's been in recent decades. It's, it's, it's a bit ironic, really. Um, my, uh, my wife's third generation Kalgoorlieite. We've been here for just about 45 years. Uh, I've grandchildren here now as well. Five grandchildren from five children. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite funny. My son-in-law is a nice sort of young, young fella. Uh, he bought me a panoramic view of what was the open pit or the, the, the Golden Mile operations back in 1978, where there was multiple head frames, multiple treatment plants, you know, multiple mines. And now this is it. It's all rolled into one. So really, really conscious of the amount of impact we have on the economy in Kalgoorlie that comes from here. It's a you know, multi, multi, multi million dollar operation. So very conscious about the longevity of the place and making sure that we continue on um, you know, looking after the asset, making the most of the opportunity that we've got. Yeah, it's pretty cool, really. So if Australia is a land of opportunity, the Golden Mile must be the epitome of that opportunity. And I use the Golden Mile term loosely. We are seeing opportunities across a five mile strike here at, um, at KCGM. So we've got the Mount Charlotte district to the north, um, the central leases, which we haven't talked about a lot yet, but there's a huge amount of growth there. Of course, the Femiston deposit ourself, itself, and also, of course, the significant growth that we see from the underground in the years and decades to come.